Now, this so, is the most important part. Of this it. is the most important part. <laughs> so you show up at the hospital and you're like, great, one of the Lakers hurt himself. And so you come in <laughs> and you realize it's not me. Now, one of the things uh, I told you, you came in, I don't remember if you knew what had happened at first. Like, no, I, I, I didn't know. I didn't know what happened. Yeah, you just knew about you. Know, you see I mean, the, I heard this. I heard he was playing basketball. Okay. And then I remember I was sitting with you where you came in and I was like, yeah, I actually have it on video. And you were like, oh, I'd like to see that. And then uh, when I showed it to you, you were like, I don't want to see that again. And I was like, what? And you're like, dude, that was nasty. I was like, you're a doctor. What are you talking about? You were like, that was gruesome. But I was like, send it. I was like, can you send it to me? Though? Yeah, yeah. I did. I did. And I did. I sent it to you. Um, so one of the things I've, I've never, I mean, I've had like my, you recommended brilliant PT, yeah. Karen Gilbert. She's, yeah, she was great. She's told me numerous times, she goes, these are gnarly bad injuries you have, like really bad. Yeah. When, when you see them as the surgeon, yeah. what, what hits you immediately, like when you see the, the two, in, uh, two like yeah. pretty severe injuries, right? So, you know, and, and I would actually say you have three severe three, injuries, right? right? So yeah. like, I hear the story from the rest. So this is what happened. So I think you came in on a Monday no. or you know, a Tuesday. Uh, well, I got injured December 1st. I was there December 2nd. Yeah, so whatever, you know. whatever days they were. All yeah. I, I remember, Tuesday or Wednesday, yeah. Or, yeah, I remember meeting you mm -hmm. and then telling you I'm gonna do your surgery two days later, yeah. and you being like, two days later. Yeah. <laughs> well, one of the residents at her, at when, I, when I was in the fast track, he was like, he looked, he was like, oh, the knee. He goes, yeah, the arm. I don't know. We might do it in a couple weeks. And I go, what the fuck are you talking about? In a couple weeks. And he was like, what? And I go, I'm not waiting a couple weeks. I mean, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I just yeah. got freaked out by it. So you see, you see both injuries, and so or three injuries, right? So. You had a patellar tendon rupture, you had a humeral shaft fracture, and you had a um, radial nerve palsy. And the radial nerve is one of the nerves that helps you extend your wrist, extend your fingers, mm -hmm. kind of, and and make a thumbs up, right? Like, like, and it's getting, and it's getting there. You're it's back. It's getting there. It's getting there. Oh man! Slow. But, but those are like three bad injuries, right? And, you know, I think the thing that gives me the most concern, the, honestly, yeah. is a radial nerve palsy. Really? That was like the number one thing where I was like, eh. I was like, number one, because it just, it comes back 70% of the time, mm -hmm. but you just don't know when. For some people, it comes back at six weeks. Some people, it comes back at, you know, six months. Some people at two years. Some people need to have surgery to get like their function back. So yeah. you just don't know. Like a humeral shaft, you put the bones together, put metal plates and screws, and it heals like 95% of the time. So is that kind of like, like, the easiest it's, to fix of what we it's, it was probably well i mean, you know I mean? Lo looking at it i mean it was yeah. probably the most straightforward in okay. terms of you know you can and we talked about it i was like you can treat this without surgery yes you did tell me and that. you know that requires you to wear a brace come back and see me every week and like you can't use crutches you can't do these things so i was like you know for you having a knee injury it makes it almost impossible to treat it non-operatively and you know i think surgery is the best thing for you yeah the patellar tendon in general, it's a pretty straightforward procedure. Can you pull up that image, the yeah. patellar tendon image? Um, so one of the things I remember you telling me was that um, you you told me that I ruptured yeah. my patellar tendon in, in 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 an unusual place. Yeah, yeah. Like most of the times, yeah, it so ruptures at what uh, where it's connected. Yeah. So so if you look at that little ball on the front, like that's this is the side view of the knee, and that little ball on the front is your kneecap. Which is Most in the of, wrong place? It's Yeah, so it's sitting really, yeah. really hot. Yeah. It's sitting a lot higher than it should be. Most of the time when you rupture your kneecap, it, or when you rupture your patellar tendon, it comes just off the tip of the kneecap. Uh -huh. So if you go to the next, uh, I guess, two pictures, or go to the MRI picture. So if you look at the MRI, uh -huh. like the resident was like, you know, they, they mentioned the ultrasound, and then the resident's like, yeah, the ultrasound says that it's, ruptured in the middle of the patellar tendon and you know all of us are in conference so me you know all my partners were sitting there and we're like that never happens it's so it never happens what are you talking about and he's like no no, no that's what it says and then we get the mri and we look at the mri and we're like it looks like it ruptured in the middle of the tendon or at, at least you know you see how that thing is like folded the little black line that's folded yep yeah, that right there mm -hmm. that should just be a straight line going directly to the tibia. So, so that's the tendon? Yeah, so that's okay. the tendon. Okay. So I'm like, huh, that's weird. And wow. then we get in the operating room and we like, we open it and it's ruptured like right in the middle. 
and torn from like the the top part of the tibia, like wow. right from that edge. And I was like, okay, this is not what I was expecting. You know, it, it just makes me have to think about it and fixing it and repairing it in a different How, way. So when you like when looking at this now, what is your approach then to repair it? Yeah. So the approach to repair it. So normally you make some drill holes through the kneecap mm -hmm. and you pass stitches through the kneecap and you tie them over the top and that just repairs that tendon. This time we had to kind of pass stitches through the tendon and then put drill holes in your tibia oh. and pass those stitches around and tie them there. And so that's, it's just the opposite of what we usually do. So that I've done that. I've had to do that twice in my career. Wow. Yeah. It's just, it just, it does, just rare. does it, does the fact that it happened in the middle inform you in, in any way, or is it just incidental? Uh, the main, re it, it's probably just incidental. Okay. Um, but the main thing it kind of informs you of is that, you know, maybe you didn't have any, a lot of times when people tear their patellar tendon, it's because they had some tendonitis, uh -huh. like either at the top or at the bottom of the tendon mm -hmm. that's been there for a while. And so it just, it speaks to how much force you were able to generate. So that's, I'm super strong. So you're super strong. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Cause I've been saying that for years. So, yeah. I mean, you know, the thing I keep, I've, I've told people this, you know, they don't like, it's hard to communicate all the feelings and, and thoughts that you have when you when something like this happens one of them is that you're like we were just having fun <laughs> like, like we were having a good time that day you know like we played we played basketball first yeah and then we went and did this stupid dunk thing which is 100 percent my fault and and we're just like doing it increment like yeah. seven eight eight yeah. and a half like we're just like having fun it was all it was and then all, i yeah. felt like i was like did i just get shot like i felt like <laughs> like a fucking car hit me or something like it was it was it's so it's so unexpected. Yeah. There's like no, a shock element never, to it happening, no, you know? No one no one expects to do that, right? Like No. It's I was talking to I was talking to one a friend of mine and he was talking about when he tore his Achilles. He was like, Yeah, I just started to run real quick. Yeah, and it just and it just I thought I looked behind me, I thought somebody kicked me in my leg. Yeah. And they didn't, but yeah, it's just I want I wanted to be like when I was laying there, I was like, Who took my legs out from <laughs> under me? Like I was like, Which one of you? Like, yeah, I was freaking out. <laughs> now how much like, because I never actually asked you this, would, was me carrying so much weight a part of this? It could have been, right? Yeah, that, definitely. I mean, it, it it impacts you. I think that's a conversation that I have with all my patients. It's like, well, my knee still hurts after blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, you could lose some weight uh -huh. and it'll take some of the pressure off your knee and it'll, it will help. So, yeah, that, I mean. And how it, often do they? Listen to me? Yeah. No one listens to me. My kids don't listen to me. My wife doesn't listen to me. Nobody listens to me. I listen to you. My doc. patients don't listen. To me. I listen to you, man. Okay, Mister Bench Pressing Three Hundred. Well, I, 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 I <laughs> okay. Okay, all right. We'll get we'll get to that. Hold on. I, I forgot that one. Uh, <laughs> your, your face that day was great. So, all right. So let's let's get through these first. Hold on. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot about that. So. So this one, all right. So this yeah. this is an incredible image, yeah. by the way. So this so, is so that's that, right? So, and then I think if you go to the next MRI picture, so just see how it's like all bright white. Yeah, that's just like sadness. Yeah. Right? And the bright white is like fluid and bleeding, and and so that's all it's doing is showing us. You know, I, oh, this is bad. I, I so I, I talked to the PTs are, are fascinating. I have a friend who was also a PT, yeah. and he was like, he was asking me, he goes, "Did you not feel pain?" in one place and I was like yeah I go I didn't feel pain in my leg knee area until a few days after surgery yeah. like before surgery I was like all I felt was this arm the that's pain good. was so that's intense that's just cuz the arm is the arm is miserable yeah it's miserable and like you also had on like a coaptation splint which is like the worst splint ever it goes up to your neck yeah. it's massive yeah. and then even though it's supposed to like keep you sturdy Every time you move your arm wrong, oh, you feel the bone edges feel, go click, yeah, it's, click, and click, it's so and painful. it's miserable. It's so, and I remember, too, they would like give me drugs, and they'd be like, how's your pain? I'm like, the same. What are you talking about? Like, it, it's never getting better. It does, the pain is not until I got dilated. That shit's nice. <laughs> nice. Now, you, you're not the first person to tell me that whoo, from a patient's standpoint. I still remember that nurse going, a lot of people say you feel a warm rush in your chest. And she gives it to me, and it was like three Two, one, I was like, oh, man. I felt like fire in my chest. I was like, oh man, drugs are good. <laughs> um, the next, what's the next image we have? 
Um, go to the here. Why don't you? Go, I guess go to the patella like afterwards, or, or this, or you can go to this. Yeah. I don't know. What is I this? think that one. Um, go to the. I think there's an X-ray of the humerus beforehand. Yeah, there's a there's a before. It's it's the it's just after the knee X-ray. Yeah, there, there you go. go. So that's what my arm looks yes. like. Yes. So that's what your arm looks like. That's a pretty clean break. Yeah, it was. It's clean-ish, right? Like yeah. to some extent, oh, right. it's clean, and then there's like these little fragments pieces which are miserable. Yeah, like they're not small enough to put screws and in. And then you like, clean those out, like you just. Some kind of, of them you take out. Yeah. The ones that don't aren't attached to anything, you have to take them out, or they just they Wild. can be a problem. And then some of them, you know, they just kind of stay in place and help to. Now, one thing I down. do remember clearly yeah. is you know I I'd, I'd met with you in the room, mm -hmm. and then you know you're like oh, well, I'll, I'll you know I'll perform a surgery tomorrow. Yeah. And I remember a resident coming in. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was like, "Oh, where's the uh, where's the incision going to be?" And he was like, "Oh, it'll be along your tricep." And I was like, "Okay." Then I woke up. It's on the bicep. Yeah. And I, I was just curious, like, yeah. there's was two he different wrong? ways. Oh, no, no, no. There's like, two different ways to do it, and yours is right on that junction where you can either do it from the backside mm -hmm. on the triceps, or you can go from the front. And just kind of location wise, the fact that it was a little lower, I made the decision to go to go the front side. Uh, okay. And then one thing I was curious. Does, like you cut through the muscle, I guess, right? Or no? So you don't, you kind of spread, right? Oh, you, you do. You spread. Okay. There's one little muscle down on the bottom mm -hmm. that you have to cut, that you have to kind of spread through. Um, but you spread through it in a point where there's nerves that come in from both sides mm -hmm. and they're two separate nerves. So you work through that area in between them. So I know it's, it's, it's nuts. It's, it's bananas. It's, 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 like all these things it's you so crazy about. that you do this. Like, I mean, you know, also when I see the images afterwards of like the plate, if you can go to the next, and like the plate with screws in there and you're like how do you get this in here yeah you this, know? so like the first one we put in just to kind of hold things in position uh -huh. you can see that little piece on the side and then you can go to the next one and that's just kind of holding that little piece in place and then you can go to the next then we put a big plate that actually allows us to to really kind of protect your arm and so yeah. that's the next one Oof. yeah so Is that's that, in my, and by the way, that's in your arm. Yeah. Uh, like, that's the front side. Yeah, this stays, right? This will never, stays forever. Unless you really want it out. Yeah, you some, don't have to have it out. Some people have told me that um, in some cases, a body will reject. Nah, you know, no, it, that's I mean, some people have pain or some people don't really like the idea of metal in their body. Yeah. And there are some patient places that are really, really like superficial. And so when you have metal there, like a clavicle, yeah. it can be irritating or like right on the elbow. And so people want that metal out because they just, it hurts, right? So you lean the wrong way, you put a backpack on or something like that. They want it out. But this is covered by muscle. It's like, yeah. it's in a place where you shouldn't ever need to have it out. Yeah, I don't think I want it out. No, like, yeah. no I don't think so.